If you've ever struggled to recognize melodies by ear and felt stuck guessing, this video is for you. We're going to talk about a simple, practical skill that doesn't require perfect pitch and that anyone, even beginners, can work on to start recognizing real melodies with confidence. This isn't another practice more tip or vague advice. It's a specific skill you must develop to stop guessing and truly recognize melodies by ear alone. If you're new here, I am Leonardo, creator of Use Your Ear, a science-based ear training method designed to help musicians deeply connect with the essence of music, feeling. Unlike traditional methods like interval training that often leads to overthinking, this approach focuses on making ear training intuitive and practical for real musical situations. So far, we've helped over 2,000 musicians who have embraced this approach and rated it as excellent on Trustpilot. Let's talk about the most essential yet overlooked skill for recognizing melodies by ear. While often neglected, melodic recognition relies on two key components, musical memory skills and note analysis skills. First, you need to retain the notes in your short-term memory immediately after hearing them. Then you analyze those notes to identify them. If you make a mistake in the first step, retaining the notes, you won't have the correct input to analyze. Simply put, you can't recognize something you don't remember. It's impossible, right? It would be a paradox if you could. On the other hand, if your analysis skills are inefficient, even perfectly retained notes can lead to incorrect recognition. These two components work together, and improving one often improves the other, leading to more accurate and faster melodic recognition skills. The problem is that 99% of musicians focus solely on improving their analysis skills, completely overlooking short-term musical memory, which is very often the weakest part of the system for most musicians. That's why this video will specifically focus on short-term musical memory. I'm going to explain how it works and the best strategy to develop it. The first thing to understand about short-term musical memory is that it works in different levels of detail. Scientific studies like the one by Sloboda and Parker titled Immediate Recall of Melodies have shown that when we hear a melody for the first time, our memory retains it kinda in a layered way, starting with the broadest details and moving to the finer ones. There are roughly three main levels involved in retaining melodies. The first thing we retain is the tonality, which is the overall key implied by the melody. Every melody in Western music is based on a key, and as we hear the notes, our mind naturally forms a mental representation of this key. In simple words, our mind instinctively tunes into the key of the melody without conscious effort. This is also supported by studies from Butler, Brown, and Carol Cromansel, which I've discussed extensively in other videos on this channel. But how can we be sure that the tonality implied by the melody is the first thing we retain? We know this because when musicians are asked to sing back a melody after hearing it, they usually stay within the key of the original melody even when they don't sing back the melody correctly. That said, beginners usually still sing notes outside the key. So if that's you, don't worry. It just means you need to focus on foundational skills, which we'll cover later in the video. The second level is the melodic contour. This means that after remembering the key, we remember the general shape of the melody, whether it moves up, down, or stays the same. We know this because even if musicians can't sing the exact pitches, they very often retain the tonality and contour of the original melody, but distort individual pitches by singing the nearest scale note. Here's an example of that. Finally, the finest level of detail in short-term musical memory is the retention of individual pitches. This is where no mistakes are made and musicians sing back each individual note correctly. This might seem like boring, nerdy stuff, 
but it's essential for understanding how to develop short-term musical memory. And it will all make sense when we tackle that later in the video. Before we get to that, let's talk about a very common mistake. Most musicians overlook the importance of musical memory and practice in ways that overload it with repetitive overlapping information, making retaining melodies a nightmare. This issue happens with our brain for any type of information, not just music. Let me show you an example with numbers so it's easier to grasp. If I ask you to memorize the first seven digits of this number, one, four, six, two, five, eight, nine, zero, two, three, seven, one, five, six, eight, three, two, four, you would probably get thrown off by the additional numbers I added on top of the first seven digits, right? Because you kept hearing similar data, extra numbers in this case, it became harder to remember the first seven digits, requiring extra effort to isolate them from the rest. This happens all the time with melodies during your training tasks, especially when you're analyzing notes by thinking about intervals, recalling the beginning of famous melodies, and so on. This is why I emphasize the importance of feeling overthinking. Less thinking means less strain on your musical memory, and you now know why this is essential. So how do we develop short-term musical memory? It's similar to other types of short-term memory, like remembering words, for example. When you know the meaning of words, it's easier to retain and recall sentences. For example, if I show you this sentence, and then this sentence, and ask you which one you could write down more easily, the answer would be obviously the English one. The other is likely just a set of unfamiliar characters for most of you. This shows that meaning is key to extracting and retaining information effectively. It's not about pure memory capacity, but mostly about familiarity with the meaning of each character or symbol. In music, this meaning comes from the sensations and emotions the notes assume within the context of the key. In Western music, there is always a key at any given moment, regardless of the genre. The key includes seven notes and seven chords. Each of them has a specific feeling. Internalizing these seven feelings is the first step in speaking the language of music and unlocking your short-term memory, as well as other important skills. This is literally like developing a musical vocabulary. Although there are specific exercises to improve short-term musical memory, this is the first and most essential step for beginner and intermediate students. Once you are familiar with these seven feelings, you can move on to targeted exercises for short-term musical memory. However, without this initial familiarity, it makes no sense to move forward because you lack the basic foundation needed for short-term musical memory to develop. It's also important to note that interval-based exercises, which most musicians focus on initially, won't help you familiarize yourself with these seven feelings. Interval exercises are not inherently wrong. They can be beneficial for advanced musicians. But for beginners or intermediates, they are indeed detrimental and counterproductive. They disregard the tonality, preventing you from even experiencing these seven core feelings which is the critical first step for improving your training and short-term musical memory. As you can see, in your training, practicing in the correct order is essential. Doing the right thing at the wrong time can lead to years of stagnation. And this happened to me. I spent a decade stuck on intervals without making any progress. And I've seen it happen to hundreds of students. This is actually a very common issue. Most musicians are far from practicing your training in a proper step-by-step -step sequence. For this reason, we've created a free online workshop to guide you through the appropriate step-by-step -step process. In this workshop, you'll learn how to assess your current skill level, understand exactly what to practice based on where you are now, and discover the right steps to take to progress in your ear training. Everything in the workshop is science-based and has been proven effective with over 2,000 students using our method. It's completely free and you can register by clicking the link in the description below. 
Alternatively, if you are not ready for the workshop yet, I recommend watching this video on why interval exercises are detrimental for beginners and intermediate students, but can be beneficial for advanced ones. Lastly, our Black Friday sale is live with discounts on our course and app. Check the link in the description.